Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I get a ton of emails. I would say that I get close to a hundred emails a day from my viewers and I get a lot of questions on what products do I like the best? What's the elastic I like the best? How do I do this? Could you make a video doing that? All those sorts of things. It takes me a long time to weed through them every day, but I do my best. And one of the things that I see most often is how do I make a stretchy bracelet or can you create more stretchy bracelets? And I've actually done a few and I've talked about a couple different styles of elastic that I like, but I guess you guys want more. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm just gonna take a simple elastic stretchy bracelet, show you how I go about creating it, show you some of my favorite tips and tricks and create something really beautiful. So if you wanna see what I'm doing today, come and join me. So the parts that we're going to be using today for our quick and easy stretchy bracelet is going to include some elasticity and I'm using the 0.8 millimeter. I find that that one is probably the best one to get through all of the beads. I get that question all the time, which size do I like? The 0.5 I tend to use more if I'm going to double it up or if I'm going to use it maybe on a pearl or something like that. And the one millimeter I tend to use on really heavy beads, maybe like turquoise or anything that's a little bit bulkier or perhaps has a bigger hole. So on the whole, I tend to use the 0.8 elasticity. I'm also gonna be using some of these eight millimeter uh, crystal rondelle sort of little spacer things. I guess they're more like a rhinestone. I love these ones. They come in, they're called soft gold and they're just a really pretty color. I'm also gonna be using this little tree of life charm in the middle. And I've got some little accent beads. I also have some, I think they're about a six by eight uh, Chinese crystal. I have some eight millimeter matte ebony wood, and we're also gonna be using a bit of GS Hypo. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut myself some of my elastic. And I tend to use a little bit more than a little less as I do in most of my projects because I just find it easier to use a little more. It's really hard to make knots when you're using a little teeny tiny bit. I find that I just am not very good at tying little knots like that. So I just use a little bit more. This is super cheap, so you know, it goes a long way. Now the first thing you wanna make sure that you always do with your elastic is pre-stretch it. If you don't do this, then your bracelets will start to sag on you as you wear them. So you don't wanna pull uh, so hard, of course, that you break it, but you can see that I'll start here and you can see how much I'm actually pulling it. So I do pull it a fair amount. So that just helps give you a little longer wear with your bracelet. So now the way that I'm gonna create this is I'm gonna start with the middle of my bracelet first and make sure you hang around to the very end because I am gonna show you just a little trick that I'm doing on this one. So I am going to put my charm in the middle. Now I am going to put a spacer bead on either side. If you didn't put a spacer bead on either side of this little charm, when you went and put beads on either side, it would kind of butt up I'll maybe I'll just show you. I'll put a, a bead directly next to it. So it just doesn't fit in there very well. And if you have two on either side, it's going to kind of make your charm go a little offset. So what I found is if you bulk that out just a little bit more and then put uh, your bead on there, it will sit a little bit better. So I'll kind of show you there. It gives it just a little bit of extra room and now the bead can push away from the side instead of being right next to the hanger on the charm. So there's just a little design tip. Now we're gonna use one of our rhinestone spacers and another piece of wood. And I'm gonna hold that one for the end and I will tell you why after. So now I'm going to put another spacer and I'm gonna put three of my crystals. And I apologize if you can hear any um, construction. Our neighbor has been some construction on their house for the last two months and it's really hard to find time to uh, film because of it so you may hear some drilling like I can hear right now but you know it's just a little bit of drilling. Okay so now I'm going to put on another five of my wood beads and now I'm going to put on another crystal spacer and another wood bead. So there's our little design pattern. So now I'm gonna repeat on the other side.
Okay, so now I have my bracelet almost completed. You'll see that I'm only gonna be using one extra bead. I'm gonna give you a couple extra ones in your kit should you need to make this a little bit larger. This will fit anywhere from the smallest of bracelets uh, sizes right up to probably like an eight and a half. So we'll give you these extra, but I'm not gonna be using those today. So now I kept this one aside. So when you get your kit, what I want you to do is find the one that has the largest hole in it. Um, th this wood is nicely drilled and some of them will come with almost like a two millimeter hole. You wanna make sure that you are finding that uh, one that has a little bit larger hole there. All right, so now I'm gonna tie my knot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go through one time like a regular, like I was tying my shoe. And then I'm gonna bring it back through a third time. And then that creates those little three sort of knots there. And I'm gonna give it a little pull here. Now I don't wanna pull so tight that I make this buckle. I think that's one thing that people do most often incorrectly is that they will just reef on this because they wanna get it nice and snug. You do wanna have it tight but you don't want to have it pulled so tight that this ends up like I'm pulling pretty tight there and you can see how it's starting to buckle up. So just relax back a little bit so that you've got just a little bit of give in there because we don't want that to um, get you know any of the buckling in there and have it too tight on your wrist. So I'm going to get that nice and snug there and then now I'm going to do another surgeon's knot. So I go around once and twice and then I'm going to give a quick little pull. And when I'm pulling on this knot, I am pulling fairly snug. I don't want to pull so hard that I break again, but I do want to make sure that I'm getting that nice and snug and I just kind of keep pulling on it. And then one more time, I'm going to do that again once and twice. And then I'm going to pull that down and I'm going to pull that nice and tight. So just keep pulling tight until you're pretty happy that it won't come apart. So the way that we can test to make sure that our knot is nice and tight is you just start to pull it apart. And if it starts to come apart all the way, then you know that it is uh, not tight enough and you'll have to retie your knots. But this is just perfect just the way that I want it. So now what I'm gonna do is just put a little dab of glue on there. I don't think it really needs it, but you know, I'm, I like to just give it a little bit of extra protection. So I'm just gonna put a little tiny dab of the GS Hypo on there. So that's nice and dry now. So I'm gonna give this a little trim. And of course, scissors are always preferred, but I never seem to bring them to my table. So I'm gonna trim that down to about a 16th of an inch. And now you can see that that's all we're left with. So you could trim that even a little bit further, but I don't know, I always just get a little bit nervous when it comes to these uh, bracelets. So I like to leave just a little bit. Now the thing that we're gonna do that's a little different than what we normally do is I am going to pop that knot right inside there. And so now it's hidden, so you don't even see that. So there we go, we have our super easy elastic bracelet that has these beautiful little embellishments on it. I love that combination of the green and the brown and I also like the little bit of a bling with the more natural product. I think it looks really cute. I hope you give this one a try. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, I love to hear from everybody and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I wanna thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.